What's up guys, my name is Splattercat and I'm here with Pixabyte today to take a look at Full Bore, a puzzle platformer that's being put together by Whole Hog Games. They recently put up a Kickstarter and were able to raise the funding for the game and so we're checking it out today because there is a new build. So what is Full Bore? Well, Full Bore, as I said, is a puzzle platformer where you take on the role of a warthog or I guess a boar if we want to keep in line with the many punneries of the game. And if you press the WASD keys, it allows you to move back and forth and I found it to be very similar to a kind of side-scrolling chips challenge almost. It's very much a puzzle game where most of the mechanics revolve around you digging through various types of dirt and trying to trigger things. So as you can see right here, by pressing the down key, I can root around in the mud. And what is this right here? Ah, yeah. Okay, so I can run through these tunnels right here. By pressing various directions, you find yourself being able to move through these tunnels. So basically what you can't see is right now as I'm moving left, I'm holding up and diagonal and then down and diagonal. And that's going to allow me to move through these tunnels like so. And this is an important part of the game because as a platformer, it's a little bit strange. I've never seen a platformer that doesn't have a jump key. And so this game very much just doesn't have anything to do with it. And I believe this part right here is just to teach you that you can hit backspace and respawn, if I recall correctly. That's right, the game allows you to commit suicide whenever you screw up. Because, let's face it, with puzzle games, there are always going to be a lot of situations in which you can probably mess up. And so, let's see if I did this properly or improperly here. Let's see if there's a way out of this little area. And, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So if you press the space key, you can stomp, which is going to destroy certain types of blocks. And also, you see these sand blocks below me, they actually deteriorate as you go through them. You can also enter like Super Saiyan pig mode here. If you end up digging through certain surfaces in a consistent direction over and over and over again, you're going to pick up speed, and you basically enter piggy warp mode. So let's follow these scaffoldings upwards, and we can dig through this stone here. It takes a little bit longer, and it does fall, so we want to be careful that it doesn't fall on our heads there. But let's see if we can find our way through this tunnel and onto the puzzles. Now, from what I can tell, the ultimate goal of the game is to track down gems. At the top right corner, you can see that it says 0 out of 1. And the game does have a lot of free-roaming aspects. So basically, the game is going to be a wide-open free-roaming puzzler where you can wander around to any area you really want at any given time to find gems. This right here is going to be a gem, but let me jump and come around here. And then we'll use our cute little piggy push right there to move that over. And then we'll grab the gem. And so there's the first gem of the game. And so right here it looks like these blocks are going to come up and save me even though I couldn't see them. And you can press the enter key. Are there going to be blocks over here too? Oh, there are. How fantastic. But I don't see any secrets over here. And even in this beginning part, this game is loaded. It is just chock-a-block full of secret zones. And there's a door behind me. We can press enter to go through doors just so you know how that functions. And let's go ahead and drop through this little shrine area. But anyways, the game is chock-a-block with secrets. Like, there are an absurd amount of just secrets laying around. For example, you learn that you can push blocks pretty early on in the game, but let's see here. And it says, I'll let you pause that. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause right now. Three, two, one, and we're going to keep on trucking. And so basically, it's just kind of talking to the lore. We've got a little piggy rocket right here, I guess. So I guess we'll jump on board. With a tilt of the head, she launched into space. God, there are two boars that you get to pick from. The game is very well animated, and that's one of the things that initially jumped out at me the most. The game's animations have a tremendous amount of care thrown into them. If you take a look at just how the pig moves, you can tell that they've taken a look at the way that boars run through the underbrush and they've animated it. Additionally, the game has a lot of that facial characteristic kind of, oh, I don't know, I guess what you could call, well, it's just got facial humor. So there's a lot of facial expressions and things that pop out with the boars and that's where a lot of the humor comes from the game. The boars do have their own little personalities and this right here is Gullen Bursty and he's the owner of the mine we're going to be exploring and basically what he's saying right here is that we were all up in his gem vault and we annihilated it with the rocket so now we owe him tons of money so we have to go into the mine to keep us honest and replace his fortune so off we go for some reason there are platypi or anteaters or whatever the hell those are in his weighing room I mean it looks like that one's doing accounting I'm not really sure that an anteater or a platypus or whatever that is would be good at running your numbers but why take a risk and so this guy over here, let's talk to him and see what he's got going. And he says that he caught us red-handed, and so we've got to refill the vault with treasure. So he's basically saying that, oh, and then he threw us off a cliff. Thanks for that. You know who your friends are. You know who your friends are. And so there are two boars that you get to pick from. I picked the female, Hildy, but there is a male boar as well named Frederick, so you can take your choice there if you care about the gender of your boar. And so let's have a look-see here and see what kind of secrets there are to unfold. 
I'm willing to bet that if I dig that out right there, I ah, messed up. Well, let's go ahead and respawn and see if we can get that done properly because I've got a feeling that this is going to be about quick reactions right here. And so we'll get that out of the way and is it going to fall? Oh, it didn't. I was assuming that that would fall all the way down and then we could use the climb up. So we'll ignore it right now. We're going to ignore it. What does this pig have to say? You're new. Have you started keeping your own map? Okay, so there is a very large map that comes along with the game. You hit the backslash key, and there it is. It's going to show you the links in between all the various areas. And so the game is quite sprawling. I've had the ability to play around with it a bit. I've got a couple hours in, and the game seems to just go on forever. And this is just a press preview copy. So honestly, I think the game is going to have that kind of density of content that you would expect from a puzzle game. So think of it as a side-scrolling chips challenge with pigs and lots of puns. And I think you'll basically get the point across. Now, it looks like we can probably go up right here. So let's go ahead and try that and once that block falls down yeah all right got ourselves all squared away here now I can destroy that block but let's take a look around these scaffoldings see if there's anything to be seen I feel as though we have to move that block somehow so let me see if I can stomp yep that did it okay so the stomp removes sand too I wasn't aware of that I've been playing a little bit but there's a lot of things that you just kind of have to experiment with in this game and I think that's one of the fun features about it between the animation it's actually got a pretty stellar or a stellar soundtrack as well so that's something to look forward to if you're into indie kind of it sounds a lot like what I remember SNES music looking like I guess we'll go in here yeah let's check this building out and see what's going on and so it says that this goes to the surface and hey we got ourselves a gym so I guess that was just kind of a simplistic view I don't know what that thing was I probably should have tested it let's see here this is gonna pop us out oh it popped us out down below okay fantastic and it looks like there's a bridge across now so they already forgot that is a really sinister looking pig although I do dig his ear accessories I accept those and that'll take us down to the dig site but I don't think I want to go there just yet Let's keep having a look around because exploration is one of the really fun things about this game. And I haven't actually had the opportunity to come up here on top of these scaffoldings yet. The game does reward you pretty heavily for looking around. And I don't really know if that's actually going to be able to be connected. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can push that over. So let's go down into the dig site and see what there is. Elevator or sheer drop? Let's go with sheer drop. Let's live on the edge for just a moment. And it seems to have swapped the soundtrack up on us. It's not saying that there's any gems in the vicinity, so I guess I'm not going to puzzle too much about it. Let's go ahead and we can either take the elevator on the left or we can make a jump right here. We can use the arrow keys on your number pad to look around and see what's coming. And that pig appears to have an infestation of flies, but he's a pig. I don't think he minds. It'll be all right. And that takes me back to the surface as well. So I guess we all it all ends at the same point. It all worked out all right. So we can dig to the left here and go around. I don't really know if that's going to give us any type of reasonable result. I suppose I'll just jump down here. This block doesn't appear to want to move. You can headbutt the ground. You can also headbutt upwards if there's things above you. So basically you have four directional digging movement as you go through. And it actually doesn't seem like it would free you up for that much motion, but it actually does. It gives you the opportunity to get some things done. It looks like we can do some digging over here. It says that there's five gems in this region. So let's have a look around and see what we can find. Looks like we can dig pretty thoroughly through all this dirt over here, but I can probably get myself stuck too, but you know what? Adventure! Adventure is waiting, so let's have a look. Is that going to be destructible? Nope, so let's hit the backspace key and respawn ourselves, and there we are. And so it's going to tell us right now what I already knew, is that we can pan the camera around. Let's go ahead and keep pushing here, although if I recall correctly, yeah, there's a gem right there, so let's grab that. We got ourselves one of the five gems in this region. Now, I'm not really sure how the gems play into the gameplay. <laughs> That was a pretty... I like the look on the pig's face as the sand was falling on her head. It made me giggle. A Christmassy giggle. And so, nothing up there. Now, we have the option to go downwards, or we can cut to the right. I don't think I'm going to be able to dig that out quickly enough. Nope. Doesn't look like it. So, it looks like our fate is sealed. Downwards we go into the mines. And we may have missed something over in that direction. Although, it doesn't appear to connect to anything. It's got kind of a glowy fungus up there. But we're not here to collect glowy funguses. We're here to get ourselves some gems. And so, down that box goes. This little thing right here is going to be a respawn point. Covers us with a bit of ash, which we can shake off quite quickly. And I think we can get to that gem on the left by getting rid of this sand. Just kind of doing some quick look around in my head or just some quick kind of extrapolation for where those blocks are going to fall. You always want to make sure you don't knock things out too quickly or too ambitiously, but we got that gem so everything worked out okay. And I believe getting this block out of the way is the only way we're going to be able to proceed downwards. And so I think we can probably, no, we can't get rid of that block. 
All right. Oh, and we've already got ourselves a new... Basically, anytime... What I've noticed about the game is anytime you notice yourself at a save point, my suggestion would be just to know that there's probably a gem nearby, and I already messed that up. I know for a fact I messed that up somehow. Let's see here. Is that going to do it? I think that'll do it. Yep. There it is, and so there's our third gym. And the first time I played through here, I absolutely missed all of these, so don't think for a second that I pre-planned these. I'm actually kind of solving these as I go. I'm surprised with my minuscule brain power. I don't really play puzzle games that often, so this one was a challenge for me. When I, when the challenge was issued, I was like, oh man, a puzzle game. I haven't played a puzzle game since Mist, so it's been a while, but I don't seem to be getting stuck, which is what I was immediately worried about. Is like people are gonna know I'm an idiot. It's not that I am an idiot; it's that people know. It's, you got to keep that concealed for as long as possible. Now it looks like this is hinting that I want this block to fall here. Okay, fantastic. That's gonna go off the edge there, and we'll push it off to the left, and we'll see if we can rope ourselves some more treasure. Because if we're not getting treasure, why bother? You know what I mean? So let's take a big leap off here. And I guess it probably just wants me to dig this over and to the right. So let's take this over here. And down it should go. There we are. And up against the wall. And it looks like we've got a rather large ammonite fossil right there, but I suppose we'll leave it alone for the time being. And to get into there, I think I'm going to have to go up and around. So let's let that block drop. I was kind of thinking about going down and under, but I was like, that's not going to work. So let's go this way. There we are. And so we got our fourth gem, and I sincerely hope I didn't miss one, but I feel as though I may have, which is a little disappointing. The game keeps track of all the gems you found throughout the game, and so there is... It's basically a challenge mode. I'm more than positive there's probably going to be a large selection of difficult and simple gems to get, which people will catalog and kind of hide on their blogs and, you know, post online and have kind of little competitions like, well, I've got this many gems and so forth. Kind of that OCD collect-a-quest type deal that started with older games, kind of the, I guess the first game that I actually noticed that in was probably Donkey Kong for the SNES, something around there, Donkey Kong Country, is when I first felt like collecting things, but anyways, we've got a cave in, we've got to go save this little boar on the other side, so, and that wasn't an insult, let's see, oh yeah, I can stomp, there we are, so the stomp destroys the sand, I always get confused when faced with sand, I don't know why, sand seems to be to my detriment, is my everlasting nemesis whenever I play this game. And so that pig is basically just saying that he's terrified, his name is McCorin, and the elevators are not working at the moment, so we have to jump down and in. But, before we do that, it looks like we can encourage a little bit of exploration here. By taking a look, these blocks can be destroyed. And it looks as though that one can too, so let's push this over here. And I don't really know what I'm striving for at the moment, but it looks as though we probably want this block maybe? I don't know. And the block has fallen upon my head, unfortunately it wasn't fatal, so... There we are. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal. I guess that's not what I'm aiming for, is it? And I can't make that jump over to there, but alas. Let's continue our downward descent. And the game does really feel like it just goes on forever. I can't express that feeling enough that I've gotten from the gameplay. It feels like a lot of times you can go left, you can go right, you can go up, you can go down. You can go very much wherever you desire. And each place has a wide collection of gems and things of that nature to be collected. So if you're into that sort of free-roaming gameplay, I've never actually seen a free-roaming puzzler before. But then again, I am not like the puzzle guru. I don't spend a lot of time playing Go and things of that nature. Puzzles tend to escape me. I'm a little bit thick, so... Let's take a look around here, and let's be careful about the way that we choose to proceed. And so, I think there's a boar right there who I kind of want to talk to. Can I walk across that? Nope. That's not a scaffold. Let's see here. And you can't kind of jump outwards, which is a little disappointing. It's it's one of those strange things about a game that builds itself as a platformer. It's, very, it's tough to make the claim that you're a platformer without being able to jump, but somehow the game actually seems to manage kind of stretching the game around its platforming elements, so it works. I mean, you can't complain about it too much if it works. Got a lamp here. Let's see. There's probably a block or something I can push into that gap. Let's take a look here. Oh, we've got a tunnel here. And my, my, <laughs> my ADD is kicking in, so let's check out the tunnel. So we've got the expedient elevator. And what is this right here? I'm headbutting a row of spikes. That seems like a rather boorish thing to do. I guess we'll dig our way through this way. Those little chain link fence blocks don't seem to fall. Oh, we've got ourselves another challenge here. Okay, so I think if I dig this out right here, that's going to fall. And then once that falls, we can go up to here. That'll create a new platform for us. We'll jump up here and we'll dig upwards. And we'll check out this gem. 
and there it is. We got ourselves another gem. So, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. My name is Splattercat, and I'm here with Pixabyte showing you pull, uh, full bore by Whole Hog Games. Not pull bore. That would be a completely different gameplay. And it is going to be available this summer. The price point hasn't been announced yet, but you can reasonably expect it to be distributed through Steam Greenlight and through other platforms. I hope you enjoyed it. And for future gameplay previews, reviews, and all that good stuff about gaming, feel free to join us here at Pixabyte next time. I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.